Yet throughout history, upper echelon members have been implicated in every sort of conspiratorial undertaking imaginable, from spying to assassination, from bribery to infiltration sowing the seeds of political unrest and rebellion. This isn't to imply that your friendly uncle, whose father's father was in the Masons and his father's father before that, is guilty of undertaking political subterfuge and extortion. But if these facts were made available to the general public, would there be such a strident need to attach the historically important faces of Benjamin Franklin and Harry Truman to their much maligned name? Oftentimes, the overt secret society will make claims of an unfounded historical lineage or go through dire efforts to conceal questionable past histories. Members are made to swear great and unyielding oaths to hold the secrets of that organization in strictest confidence, ensuring that their revelation will be met with a suitable and dramatic fate merely hinted at by the outlines of that somber oath. An unspoken climate of fear emerges in the secret society. Imbuing it with all the hallowed ethos of sanctity and vigilance to be found in the most unbridled religious zealotry, it is worth noting that in the overt secret society, implied religious and philosophical devotion is nominally considered en priori fact, as opposed to the covert secret society which is considerably more political and influential in scope. Occasionally, overlappings can occur, such as the relationship between the Skull and Bones Society, a perfectly prominent example of a covert secret society, and the aforementioned example of Freemasonry. Even when not outwardly religious in scope, such as in the cases of the Jesuits or Opus Dei, this aura of divine safeguarding and sanctimony has led to the cultish appeal of the society, in particular for those true believers who are disaffected from, or otherwise non-adherents of, conventional religion. The substitution of the secret for the sect thereby takes the place of a sort of divine revelation for the true believer what may be a curious method of transubstantiation, indeed. The other classification is that of the clandestine, or covert secret society. Unlike the overt society, no attempt at public outreach are made on behalf of the covert one. Public admission is not possible, except by invitation only, and, to quote a now cliched precept, if you have to ask, you'll never know. Reasons for this hermetically guarded level of secrecy may vary from organization to organization, but generally one thing in common is that their interests generally extend to widespread global geopolitical infiltration and influence, and at times, highly organized and systemic criminal and terrorist organizations. The secrecy of the covert society is not motivated by tradition or even influence over lower-level members, but necessity. Both the much-dreaded specter of the Illuminati and the vow of silence practiced by the La Cosa Nostra Syndicate are glaring examples of the occult operations of a covert secret society. <laughs>